A global pandemic, the threat from China, but also a 73% approval rating. Those are just some of the things marking the beginning of President Tsai's second term in office. I'm Natalie Sell. And I'm Andrew Ryan. Let's check out the stories on our radar. President Tsai Ing-wen has officially begun her second term. She was sworn in on Wednesday in a ceremony that was streamlined due to COVID-19. Tsai begins her second term with a new second-in-command, William Lai, her former premier turned rival in last year's DPP primary. Outgoing Vice President Chen Jianren says he's going back to academia. A slight cabinet reshuffle marked the beginning of Tsai's second term. There are new ministers of culture, science, and national development, but key figures like the health, defense, and foreign ministers are staying in their positions. China has barred Taiwan from taking part in the annual World Health Assembly meeting for a fourth year in a row. The meeting of the WHO's governing body kicked off on Monday in virtual form due to COVID-19. There's been a groundswell of global support for restoring Taiwan's observer status in the assembly, but the WHO says it will wait until later this year to discuss Taiwan's status. The Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company has announced plans to open its second wafer foundry in the U.S. Taiwan government approval is still needed, but the company expects to bring the plant online in 2024. The company has also stopped taking orders from Huawei in response to tighter U.S. export controls. And under the radar this week, love is in the air. The date May 20th may seem like an ordinary day to English-speaking years, but to Chinese speakers, this date sounds a bit like I love you. The number of weddings on this day went up this year, and newlyweds sported a new look, masks to prevent COVID-19. And now for our words of the week. Andrew, ready to guess? Yes. Applesauce. Yes. Are you hungry again? <laughs> I am. Music. Ma ma made in Taiwan? Ma Madam, Madam President. That's right. <laughs> I want to congratulate our Madam President, Tsai Ing-wen. She broke the glass ceiling for all women in Taiwan. If a woman can become president, a woman can do anything. She did it without the legacy of a father, a husband, or a brother, right? Yeah. So I think that's quite an achievement. And Independent, yep. Congratulations. Wonderful. All right, you ready for my word? Yes. Ryan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Redo. Resume. Restore. Restart? Ah. Ta-da! Restart. Now, this has two meanings. Uh, one is inspired by the Chinese guiling, which means to restart or go back to zero, which is what we're hoping for for our COVID-19 cases. Um, but beyond that, for a new uh, term in office for President Tsai, it's kind of like a restart for her too. Hit the yes. restart button, let's see where we go. It's a good place to start right now, right? Yep. Let's get these on the shelf. Taiwan's first female president is now the nation's first two-term female president. She was inaugurated on Wednesday. Tsai's ratings are at an all-time high. Let's see what she had to say on Inauguration Day. President Tsai Ing-wen was sworn in for her second term at the presidential office. In January, she was re-elected with 57 percent of the votes. But inaugural events were scaled down due to the pandemic. In her inaugural address, President Tsai highlighted Taiwan's world-class capabilities in producing medical supplies and working to develop a vaccine during this pandemic. The government will continue to support these industries so that Taiwan can be a key source of strength in overcoming global outbreaks. Tsai also plans to strengthen Taiwan's aerospace and renewable energy industries. She believes Taiwan can reach its goal of increasing green energy to 20 percent of its energy profile by 2025. There was no banquet for this year's inaugural inauguration and only 200 people attended the address at the Taipei Guest House. Guests included city and county leaders, foreign representatives, cabinet officials and the National Epidemic Prevention Team. Tsai said the world already sees Taiwan as a democratic success story. She said Taiwan will continue working to participate in international organizations and strengthen partnerships with like-minded countries. As for relations with China, Tsai said cross-strait ties should be built on the principles of peace, parity, democracy and dialogue. 
President Tsai said the legislature will form a constitutional reform committee to discuss amendments to the Constitution and human rights issues. Lowering the voting age from 20 to 18 will be a priority issue on the agenda. Tsai thanked the people of Taiwan for working together to fight COVID-19. She said Taiwan's success has fostered a sense of national pride and solidarity that will live on in people's hearts. Taiwan is populated by kind and resilient people, she said. We can always count on our democracy and solidarity to weather difficult times. This year's inauguration was very different from Tsai's first inauguration, and that's of course because of the global pandemic. How different was it? Well, Leslie Liao has the answers in today's Taiwan Explained. Now, I was a member of staff during Taiwan's 14th presidential inauguration in 2016. Now, according to Natalie and Andrew, that makes me qualified to tell you the differences between the inauguration yesterday and the one before it. That's right. So you got 60 seconds. Are you ready? Let's do it. All right, go. All right. So both inaugurations were held on May 20th. In 2016, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs held a reception for 700 foreign dignitaries on the night before her inauguration. Tsai and Vice President Chen Jianren took their oath of office in the morning at the presidential office. After that, special guests took turn congratulating Tsai while a crowd of 30,000 enjoyed performances outside. Wow. Tsai then gave a speech in front of the presidential office building. Ooh. That night, there was an, an official banquet at the Taipei Marriott Hotel. Fast forward to 2020, the inauguration is streamlined due to the pandemic. Foreign ministry reception? Nope. Overseas guests? Not invited. There was a swearing-in ceremony and a smaller meet-and-greet with representatives to Taiwan, but no one shook hands, they just bowed at a distance. Overseas dignitaries congratulated Tai via video, and instead of a big stage setup, they moved everything across the street to the Taipei guest house. Tsai gave her speech before a crowd of 200. There were no banquets. Wow, wow good job. Nice. You told us all of that Ooh. in less than a minute. <laughs> Ooh, my heart is racing. <laughs> you did wow. a great job. Now, Leslie, you actually got an inside look at the inauguration back in 2016. That's what right. was your job? So I was in the, uh, the, with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, the Department of Protocol, mm -hmm. and that handles anything and everything to do with foreign dignitaries. And like I said, there were over 700. Wow. So I think there were 23 different uh, like delegations, wow. and our department had to oversee like buses, transportation, and uh, it was really interesting, but we also were in charge of also setting up the planning for the banquets and a lot of the inauguration, wow. everything from the seating to, I remember my boss, he was just like, I'm not going to be here this afternoon. I was like, why? He's like, I'm going tasting for the inauguration banquet. I'm like, oh, enjoy. That's the best part of the job. For him, yeah. Um, our job was more to make sure everything was very smooth. So. When you see like President Tsai, her motorcade pulls up to the front of the Taipei guest house like it did yesterday. She didn't have to wait for anything, right? Wow. And everybody else waited for her. Right. Did you get one of those like little phone wires behind your ear? We did. You we did. did. And uh, it was uh, there was a whole science to like uh, attaching it to your suit, right? So do you make sure the <laughs> the wires don't nice. show up? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And like I was the best one at that. So like everyone just like. <laughs> All right, Leslie, you have to equip everybody's uh, <laughs> like earphone to their... All right, from now on, like our microphones for Taiwan Insider, it's you're going to put them on. These are different. These are different. Like the over-the-ear ones with the walkie-talkie, yeah. like there's a way to like set it up on the, uh, the suit to make sure like everything doesn't show up and it just everything's over the ear. Fun. But the thing is, it's impossible to hear, hear through those things. Oh. So like anytime, like there's seven people maybe on the conversation, all you hear is like static. So that's why all those uh, spy guys look so cool. They're like, uh, yes, really yeah, actually got to the hear president. Yeah. Figure out what's going on. <laughs> what did you say? What? Who's coming down? So I heard you got to look at her new car, the new Audi. That's time. right. What was it like? Um, so my detail during the presidential banquet, it was at night at the Taipei Marriott. I was on the first floor. Uh, in the valet area so when she pulled up her motorcade was there just waiting for her because she's the president her, she can park anywhere she wants mm. <laughs> during that time they had a uh, there was big news that uh, Taiwan for the first time gave the contract for the presidential vehicle from BMW to Audi and there was news about like the specs of the car and what it can and can't do. Did you get to see inside of it? Uh, kind of. The, the Secret Service let me do it because I was a little too curious. But like they, <laughs> they were just like they knew what was going on because like um, I was standing outside with the Secret Service agent and I was just like, like I was just like looking over at him and he knew he. I was looking over. I was like, I was like, is that the new A8? <laughs> the new A8? He's like, yeah, yeah. He's like, yeah, it's the new A8. I'm like, 
can it really do everything the media says it can do? <laughs> and he's like, yeah. And then he kind of like showed me around a little bit. He showed us, he showed like, I'm not sure I'm allowed to like say what he showed me. <laughs> but the, th the really cool thing was like, he was just like, all right, you know what? Um, try and like open the door. And the door is really heavy because those things are bulletproof. Mm. Oh. They're like bulletproof and fireproof and um, they can keep out. Uh, certain poisonous gases and things like oh, that. Yeah, that's cool. That's so awesome. good to know I was just she's like, safe. Oh in my that goodness! Car. <laughs> it was a really heavy door, and you have to have so much back strength. So I have nothing but respect for the guys who have to like follow her around, open mm. the door constantly because she's it's a good workout for them. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, that's amazing. Thank you so much for giving us this insider look at uh, the presidential. This inauguration. is Taiwan Insider. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and that's uh, Taiwan Explained for this week. This week on Hashtag Taiwan, I want to talk to you about this lady, this dude, and these two music videos. Now, there's a lot to unpack this week, so let's just jump right into it. This woman is an artist known as Fanny Lu. She grew up in Taiwan, though she is controversial because of her pro-China views. RTI recently published a news article about how more people than ever think Taiwan should become a normal country, so Fanny's stance is rather unpopular. In the beginning of the month, Fanny released a video praising China. In the video, a man wearing green, which are colors symbolic of Taiwanese independence, attempts to remove Taiwan from a map of China. Check it out for yourself. Fanny lays the smack down on the guy and goes on to sing China's praises. She lists the Chinese provinces one by one, and then in the end says, Oh, China. The video has not been well received. As of recording, it has about 2,000 likes and 42,000 dislikes on YouTube. As you know, people on the internet, they like what they like and they absolutely hate what they dislike. But there's only so much you can do about content you don't like, right? What do you want me to do? Dress a drag and do the hula? Uh, I know, I know, it's a lot to unpack. That's Brian Tang. He is a self-made talk show host in Taiwan, and he has a background in biology and neuroscience. But he's committed himself to a career in comedy, and oh boy, is he good at it. Brian made a parody of Fanny's song, listing off Taiwanese counties instead of Chinese provinces. <laughs> Brian's music video is a near shot-for-shot -shot remake of Fanny's. It replaces a lot of the lyrics and imagery with Taiwanese equivalents. And don't worry, Brian doesn't leave out the most important part. However, the fun doesn't stop there. If you look closely, the male model in both the videos are the same person. Now that's Guo Su Ting, and he's actually come out to say that he's thankful to Brian for giving him the opportunity to participate in the parody. Originally, Guo said he thought representing Taiwan in Fanny's video was a good thing, but he got a lot of backlash. Guo was worried that it was a career-ending move, but thanks to the opportunity Brian gave him, he said he felt like he redeemed himself. Now, anybody who is willing to dress themselves in drag and upload it to the internet certainly has my respect. Today's brain game is the inauguration examination. And as you can guess, I'm going to be showing you some pictures of inaugurations past and present. And I'm going to ask you to identify some of the things you see in the picture. This sounds like fun. Are you guys ready? We're ready. All right, so on buzz number one, we have Natalie So. On buzzer number two, we have Leslie Liao. All right, let's have a look at our first picture. This is a picture of the first inauguration of the Republic of China, which is the official name of the government here in Taiwan. It's May 20th, 1948. That's Chiang Kai-shek. Name the city. Natalie. Nanjing. 
It is. That is Nanjing, China. Now, of course, this took place before uh, the ROC government came to Taipei. Now, you'll see he's actually speaking into a microphone that says Zhongyang Diantai on it. So that's actually a Radio Taiwan International that microphone. That is so cool. We have it in our hallway. I mean, no in the way. exhibit upstairs. Upstairs. Yeah. That, is, that is neat. <laughs> yeah. That is he really also, neat. He declared the a victory over the Japanese on the same microphone. That's right. So we have a piece of history in the we office. We have it. Third floor. All right. <laughs> I'm, good. I'm going right now. <laughs> Question number two. Have a look at this. This stamp was issued in honor of the first direct election in Taiwan. What year was that? Ooh, I think that was Natalie too. 1996. That is correct. So what we have in this photo here is President Li Denghui on the left, Vice President Lian Zhan on the right there. And of course, uh, China set off missiles in the Taiwan Strait Shiny after faces. That. Yes. <laughs> All right, question number three. This is uh, pop star Zhang Hui Mei, Ah Mei. She actually sang the national anthem in what year? I Leslie got that one. 2004. No. 2000. Oh. <laughs> I was there. So actually, this isn't fair to Leslie because Natalie and I were hosting together. Oh. Actually, in front of the presidential office at this the is, time. This question are loaded. We heard loaded it questions. live. And in fact, if you can pull that, I don't know if you can reach that newspaper there. Here I even saved the newspaper. Check this Good out. for you, Andrew. This is the Save newspaper everything. from when uh, President Tsai Ing-wen was inaugurated in 2000, along with Annette Liu, the first female vice president. It's a very exciting day. Um, yeah, I saved these things too. It's pretty cool. <laughs> pretty cool. Have a look at this photo. Uh, this is a stamp that featured the video game likeness of the president and vice president. Who's the man you see here? Leslie. VP Chen Jianren. That is correct. Good for you. Doing very good. Um, now you can see this is what the stamps look like without uh, President Tsai covered up. I thought she was a giveaway. Ah, <laughs> that's pretty, that's, that's, that's a dead true. ringer for that's true. Tsai. Uh, that brings us to this year's inauguration. Now in the top you see all of the new cabinet ministers being sworn in and they're all wearing masks. <laughs> but in the bottom picture at the president's speech, no one is wearing a mask. Why is that? Leslie? They're abiding by social distance. Abiding social distance. Also? They're outdoors. Both right. You each get a point for that. <laughs> okay, I got three points. How about you? I got two. You got two? Doing well. All right, we've got a couple more questions to go. Just two oh, more. I oh. So this is uh, President Tsai raising her right hand and giving the oath of office. Uh, what is she facing? Leslie. A portrait of Dr. Sun Yat-sen. Very good. There's Are another thing she's there, facing. Right? What else is she facing? One more point. Oh. Who wants it? Flowers? <laughs> Not the flowers, Leslie. Is she facing the Constitution? Nope. Something else really obvious. <laughs> Leslie. Flag. <laughs> <All right. laughs> She's facing, uh, there's the portrait of Dr. Uh, Sun Yat-sen, and there you see I the flag. See. <laughs> All right, one cool. final photo today. Are you guys ahead. ready for this? Mm -hmm. All right, so this is the new vice president, uh, William Lai on the left, legislature president, uh, Yoshi Quinn on the right. Yo is handing Lai a yellow package. What's inside the package? <laughs> Leslie. The presidential seal? No. Close. Very close. <laughs> the vice presidential seal? <laughs> that is correct. <laughs> All, right. All right, so I asked them before we started to keep their own scores. How many scores, uh, how many points do you get, Nally? Three. I think you might have gotten four. I think I got four. How many did you get? I got five. Five? All right. Good for, you were but, there. But there was like, well, there were many chances. There were many chances. That was... All right. Well, that means that we will be inaugurating uh, Leslie Liao, the president of Taiwan Insider. <laughs> <laughs> Are you ready to take the Taiwan News Quiz? This is our lightning round. That means we have 60 seconds on the clock. And Nally and Leslie are going to work together to see how many answers they can get correct when I'm asking questions about the news this week in Taiwan. Are you ready? Yes. All right, 60 seconds on the clock. Go. All right. What international meeting kicked off on Monday without Taiwan? WHA. That's correct. What high profile figure was conspicuously absent from President Tsai's inauguration on Wednesday? Mind Joe. Han Goryu, that's the one I was going for. Okay. They were both gone? Yeah, yeah they were both All right. gone. Two points. Uh, overseas dignitaries were also absent from the inauguration. How many sent their congratulatory messages by 44? video? Nope. 
72? 92. 92. <laughs> All right, President Tsai's new cabinet was sworn in this week, but women's rights groups say that it was the lowest percentage of women in the cabinet in how many years? 12? Ever? 30 years. Wow. Uh, Taiwan wow. is planning to reduce quarantine time for people coming to Taiwan to do what? Business. That's correct. Short business trips. Migrant workers groups are protesting after Taipei Main Station said it might continue the ban on what? Sitting, Sitting on the, the ground. Minhol. That's right. Kuomintang Chairman uh, Jiang Qichen said that his party is not good at what? Campaigning? Nope. <laughs> I don't know. Being an opposition party. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right, I have, uh, I have one more bonus question for you this week. This week, a 106-year-old man broke the record for oldest person to paraglide in Taiwan. How old is the person who has the Guinness record? Oh, it's a Guinness record. Oh, older than him then. Oh. 108? 110? Actually, it's 104. If he'd gotten the Guinness Book of World Records to come and watch him oh, do it. Oh, no. What? They have to be here? Yes. They could, he could have been what? the oldest they, person they in the, the world. But took the video and everything. I know. You have Aww. to have three people uh, observing, plus oh, I think no. somebody from the Guinness Book of World Records. Aww. But in our That's hearts, okay. <laughs> Yo Bebe, you're always number one. Uh, and of course, we're going to finish off with a little video of him doing this amazing feat. Let's have a look. Prepare for liftoff. 106-year-old Yo Deshing takes to the skies. With the guidance of a coach, Yo is paragliding. He's a little nervous at first, saying a little prayer in the air. But after a while, Yo is absolutely loving the experience. Cautious prayers turn into joyous hymns, and Yo even raises his hands and legs as he flies through the sky. Just look at him go. After 10 minutes, Yo and his coach come in for a bit of a rough landing, but he's A-OK. -okay. And he's just set the record as the oldest man to ever paraglide in Taiwan, but not without getting the go-ahead from medical experts first. Yo says that it was amazing to be able to see such an expansive view. He said that he witnessed the glory of God's creation and that it was beautiful. Grandpa Yo's 10-minute flight is more proof than ever that age is just a number. I don't know if you noticed, but in today's program, we put some fun things on the shelf. We have a can of inauguration beer, and we have a glass bottle from 2016. Uh, the right. inauguration from four years ago. This is the same design as the stamp, and it's been sitting in my closet for the past four years, you guys. So uh, I would drink it, huh? <laughs> I, would have, I would advise against it. Well, why don't you save that one? We'll uh, use so. these ones okay. for now. All right. righty. So for Taiwan Insider, I'm Andrew Ryan. I'm Natalie So. I'm Leslie Liao. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.